All right, good morning or good evening, rather, um, to all of you that are watching today. Thank you for joining the 253 exam prep challenge. I am so happy um, you are on today. Tell me, can you hear me okay? Hi, Shara. Thank you for being on. Thank you so much. Um, are you all able to hear me okay? I'll wait a few seconds. There's a little bit of a delay.
Yes, excellent. Thank you so much, Shara. Um, thank you so much for being on today. I want to let all of you know, um, while we wait for a few others to join us, that today you should have gotten an email that has the study guide attached. So you will want to have that and any other instructions can be found in that email. So you will definitely want to see that. As you come in, just say your name. Let me know where you're from. Lots of Lamar friends. Hi, Shalice. Glad you're on today. Thank you for being here. All right. All right. All right, so let's do it. Yeah, my pleasure, my pleasure. There's a little bit of delay between us and you, but no worries at all. Thank you all again for being on. My name is Nikita Borton, and I am a master level educational diagnostician. I am going on my 13th year as an educational diagnostician, and I still love it. I have no complaints whatsoever. I always say that being an educational diagnostician is some of the best work we'll ever do on this side of heaven. Um, so thank you so much for being on today. A little bit about me. I believe that all children can make progress academically and functionally. And I take very serious this work um, that we do as educational diagnosticians, making sure um, that children with disabilities have equal and equitable opportunities to go be great in the educational setting, just like their peers. And I believe that parents of children with learning disabilities deserve dignity and respect. So I always try to communicate that when I'm working with parents. And I believe that diagnosticians make the world go around this work that we do every day, um, advocating what's best for children, even though sometimes we have to pull others around us, pull them along, you know, kicking and screaming. Educational diagnosticians set a tone. Um, they set a culture of inclusion. Um, and I love it. And I think it's some of the most important work we will ever do, making decisions that are right for children, no matter what their needs are. So again, my name is Nikita Borton. I am the founder of the Borton Institute. We are a high-end professional development firm, and we offer high value training opportunities to educational diagnosticians, zero to 100 years experience. It doesn't matter where you all are on your, on your educational diagnostician journey. If you're looking to execute at a high level, at a mastery level, as an educational diagnostician, the Borton Institute is for you. You. Uh, so thank you again for being on. Latera, thank you so much for being on. I'm happy you are here. And I want to check in with you all just for a second um, and make sure that you all have the email with your study guide. If you do have it, if you just stick yes in the chat so I can make sure you all are following along. If you, for some reason, did not receive the study guide, you will need it. If you did not receive the study guide, you can email me at Borton Institute at email. I'm sorry, Borton Institute at gmail.com. You can send me an email to Gmail. Um, and I will make sure that you get not only the study guide you need today, but that you will need for the rest of the week. I'll be emailing you study materials frequently. I'll be giving away a few freebies, so you don't want to miss that. So make sure I have your email or that you send an email um, because I want to be in contact with you. All right. Looks like you all did get it. Great, great. Let's see. 
Yeah, yeah. Hey, y'all are on it. Hi, Rosie. Hi, Karen. Thank you guys for being on. Um, I'm happy <laughs> that you were able to make it today. Um, I want to make sure that you all have my contact information. I'm going to share that with you. I can be um, found at the Borton Institute. It's scrolling down there um, on the bottom of your screen, thebordeninstitute.com. That's our website. And you're able to find the services, the professional development training that we have coming up. All that information will be there for you. And I'll leave my email up um, in case you need a moment to jot that down. So we are on Facebook. We're on Instagram. And today I added YouTube. I am not a techie person at all. So this is a huge thing that I was able to add us onto YouTube. So on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, the Borden Institute is the same handle for all three, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, the Borden Institute. As a matter of fact, I tell you what, since I'm growing the YouTube channel, it's brand new <laughs> as of today. Um, the first 100 people that follow the Borton Institute, I will send you a free study video. Um, I'll give you free access to that study video. I typically charge for it, but for the 100 followers on our YouTube, our new, brand new YouTube page, I will give you free access um, to that video so you will be able to see it. Also, I, in error, sent an email saying that this would not be recorded, but it is being recorded. I'm new. I'm learning. Um, so it is being recorded and all of these um, study challenge recordings that we'll do together daily, I, they will be available on YouTube. So you'll always have it to go back and watch it and to use it with your study guide and your private study. OK, so that will be on YouTube. All right. So we like we said, the Borden Institute, we work with diagnosticians all ranges of experience but today we get to focus on diagnostician students yeah i love diagnostician students mainly because i love the work but i love that you're so curious and that you lean into the content and everything is new and fresh and you're excited and i'm still excited i'm 13 years in the game um, as an educational diagnostician and i still love it and i want for you to love it too but we have to get past this dreaded 253 exam 253 exam um so thank you for making the commitment and challenging yourself to knock out this 253 exam and let's just lean into some intense study. Um, so again, thank you for being on live and then all of you who will be watching this on replay, thank you for being here and sharing your time with me. Um, my hope is that you find this valuable um, in your study. And again, my email is posted. So make sure you email me that you're getting all the study materials that we talk about, especially if you're watching this in replay mode. Okay. So I want to help you tackle and take down the 253 exam okay i want for you to i want to present the information on the 253 exam i want it to be structured for you i want it to be thorough and i do not want you to be overwhelmed okay my hope um, is to support you in your study so much so that you walk in on test day feeling confident and ready to go, okay? So if you are concerned about how to study for the 253 or what to study for the 253, I am here to help you with that. And yes, this even includes the constructed response, all right? So that's why I created the 253 exam study challenge. It's a 28-day study challenge yes yes you studying every day for 28 days and this is designed to motivate you to get you going um also designed for you to have the exact material you need so that you can walk in feeling confident on day one all right so let's take a pulse let's see how we're feeling in the chat in one word Describe to us how you're feeling 
about the 253 exam? What are you feeling? If you had to put it into one word, what would that word be? Stick it in the chat. Nervous. April says nervous. <laughs> Jerrica is also saying nervous. I get it, Shalise. Shalise is saying fearful. I see lots of nervous. Yeah, I see lots of nervous. Shara, that's a good word. I remember feeling that way about my exam. Rosie's thinking nervous. Good, 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 good. Thank you for sharing that with me. Well, you are certainly um, in the right spot. I definitely want to help you tackle those feelings. And like I said, I remember being a DIAC student um, 13 years ago, 13, 14 years ago, looking for materials to help me study for the 153 exam. I know I'm dating myself. I hope I don't look like it. Um, but it was the 153 at that time. And I remember our program gave us like three sheets of released test questions from the 153. And I mean, they gave us an answer key, but they didn't give us a rationale for it. So, I mean, you know, we knew what the right answers were, but we didn't know why they were right. So I remember looking on Amazon, I was looking at bookstores everywhere and there were no exam prep materials for diagnosticians, none, nothing. So my living room floor was covered um, with literature and paper, and it was just super overwhelming, and it added more stress, and it added more pressure, um, you know, to passing the exam, and it didn't have to be that way, and I don't want it to be that way for you. I want to do the heavy lifting for you. I want to curate these materials, get them into your hands, again, in a way that's structured, not overwhelming in a way that makes sense. And I want for you to just be free to focus on what's important and that's passing the exam, okay? So let's get to the content. It's about 7.40 and I plan on us wrapping up at about 8 p.m., okay? Um, so I'm gonna share my screen with you. Let's see how this goes. And this is a very interactive session. Um, I'm not... Much of a lecturer, I definitely want you dropping comments and I'll be checking the comments periodically. Okay, so I'm going to pull this up. I think I got it. All right. Are you guys able to see the screen? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that. All right. So the Borden Institute LLC, the 253 exam prep study challenge. Okay. So what we said about the challenge, we'll be studying together for 28 days. I am going to come on live at 730 every day this week. Same channel, same place, same time, 7.30. And we're going to do and go over bite-sized pieces of the content, okay? Here, but I want for you to understand what the framework is of the exam that you're taking, okay? The exam is 90 selected response questions, and there's one constructed response question. It's not scary. It's not scary. I got you. We're going to break it down. Um, you have five hours to take the exam. I believe the first 15 minutes of your exam time is going to be spent going through the functionality of the software and how to work the computer. There are different versions of the same exam. So that's interesting. Everyone doesn't get the exact same test. There's different versions of it. And the exam content is solely based on domains and competencies. And that's a good thing because you know exactly what to study. So the competency statements 
or the broad statements that you see competency one, competency two, and they define what you need to know as an entry level diagnostician coming into the public schools in Texas. And then under those bold competency statements, there are descriptive statements and those are pieces of gold. You have to pay attention to the descriptive statements because there's two things that they are telling you. And this is what you need to know when you study. The descriptive, the descript, the descriptive statements are telling you what, the, what they expect you to know. No, no, no. That means this is knowledge that you need to be able to apply to a question that's given to you in a scenario and the exam is chock full of them. So this is information knowledge that you have to be able to apply. So memorizing different things, trying to come up, you know, with mnemonic devices and things to jog your memory, it could be helpful, but this is information that you have to have mastered and kind of nailed down concrete that you can apply to different scenarios they give you on the exam. And then, of course, there's different skills that they want for you to be able uh, to do. And this is as an entry level educational diagnostician, okay? So I always like to show this exam framework so that you can know how to study. Domain one is competency. So domain one has three competencies within it. It is competency one, competency two, and competency three. Now look at how large a percent this is of your exam. This is the bulk of your exam, competency one, competency two, and competency three. This is why I hit competency, this is why I hit child find so hard. I hit it over and over and over. Child find is what competency one, two, and three is all about. It is a law, child find law. Um, and it is 34% of your exam. It is foundational to everything you will ever do as an educational diagnostician. That is because it's law, child find law. And the role of an educational diagnostician is to maintain compliance with the law, child fine. Um, so that's what we're going to spend the bulk of our time talking about today. If you've heard it before, wonderful. It is helpful to hear it again, because again, the test is not asking you if you're aware of the law, it's asking you if you know it if you're able to apply it to any given scenario that they put on the exam, and frankly, that you will have in real life when you're sitting in this seat as an educational diagnostician. A lot of you, when you registered, you said that you also needed help with this domain too, curriculum, instruction, um, and that's what this covers. That's 23% of your exam. Professional responsibilities, traditionally, I've been doing this about I want to say three or four years, three or four years um, of work with roughly 500 educational diagnostician students. And I found that this professional responsibilities domain three, people typically do the best in this area because it's what the educational diagnostician should do. It's ethics, you know, things, professional responsibilities. So people typically do that well and boom. Domain four, it is the constructed response. Um, so again, do not let it scare you. Do not let it scare you. You're going to knock it out the park. You won't have any problems with it, okay? So like I said, competency one, this is foundational to everything that you will study, and these are the largest parts of your exam. So we're going to lean into these today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. And today, we're just going to focus on competency one. Now, remember, I'm giving you bite-sized chunks of these competencies, but there's descriptive statements that you will need to get comfortable with and sit with and read. And that's what your study guide takes you through. It takes you through a structured look at those descriptive statements, but um, you want to keep them in front of you and keep that going, okay? Um, so competency one is apply knowledge of requirements for identifying students who meet disability criteria 
and for determining the need for specially designed instruction and related services. So competency one, what does it want you to know? What do you have to know? Where do you need to be able to apply knowledge? Well, the requirements for identifying disability criteria. Being able to identify if a child is disabled, competency one. And not only can you identify if they're disabled or not, you need to be able to determine, do they need specialized instruction? And this is what people miss sometimes. To be in special education, it is too prompt. You have to meet criteria for an eligibility condition and you have to demonstrate a need for specialized instruction, okay? Those are, it's two prompt. You have to have both in order to qualify for special education services. So this is the knowledge that competency one is expecting you to have. Whenever you read your competencies, remember, you are looking for what it is that you need to know what knowledge do you have to have? And then what skills do they want you to be able to do? Competency one is focusing on the knowledge of disability criteria and the need for specialized instruction. Okay, so I'm going to stop right here just for a second. I want to know if you have any questions, so stick them in the chat. Do you have any questions? And if you had to rate yourself on your knowledge your well-versed knowledge of child find. Rate yourself from one, absolutely none, to three. I'm the master at it. I can teach other diagnosticians about child find. Rate yourself on how well you know child find law and how well you would be able to apply it to a scenario on the exam. Rate yourself from one to three. One being, I don't know, I have no idea. To three, I'm the master. I can teach others. Just drop it in the chat. A two, that's good, April. April's thinking a two. Okay, good. Shara, middle of the road, good. Good, Latera, two, excellent. Christina Padilla, too. Hey, Christina. Uh, Karen. <laughs> Karen, I love that. Karen said she's about 1.5. I love that. I would say something like that, Karen. Good, good. Okay, so let's talk about how we can push you over um, into a three. Rosie, are you thinking the same thing? A 1.5. We're going to push you over. Let's see if we can't bump you up a point, a half a point, um, just by getting you comfortable um, looking at this information. So I'm going to share my screen again. Um, let's see. All right. If you have been with me any point of time at all um, in your walk as a diagnostician student, you know that I always, always take students and tenure diagnosticians to this legal framework. This is the legal framework completed um, Region 18 Legal Framework. And in this website are is all things special education law. All things special education law, okay? In your study of competency one, and I cannot say this enough, competency one, competency two, competency three, you have got to know the notice of the procedural safeguard booklet and the parent guide to the R process, you have to know the information in this booklet. You have to know the information in this booklet. These booklets take the special education law found all over this website. They condense it into parent-friendly layman's language terms. Easy to read. I always recommend that students start there. Why? Because it's foundational and it's easy to read. Now, once you get it, you read through it, you highlight it, you make notes, you're making it your own 
you're able, this is knowledge that you have gained, then come to the website, click on frameworks, and it will take everything, most of what you saw in the procedural safeguard booklet and the parent guide to the ARD process, and it breaks it down here for you. All of these links are frameworks within special education law. Okay, this is a terminology that you will be reading when you take the 253 exam. OK, this is a terminology um, that you will be reading when you take a 253 exam. So you definitely want to get familiar um, with the vocabulary there, but definitely for sure start with the procedural safeguard booklet and the art guide to the parent process so that you can get an understanding, a foundational understanding of what the language is um, in the law. So this is it. Procedural safeguard booklet. Make sure you check the date. Uh, make sure that it's the, the most current. I think there might be, no, this is it from September, 2022. This is the most current update. So make sure you check that whenever you pick up the procedural safeguard booklet. Um, and I'm gonna take you to page two, right here. Child find, I cannot take you here enough. I cannot take you here enough. These are things that you have, this is, you just have to know it, okay? Um, and what this says is, all children with disabilities residing in the state who are in need of special education and related services, including children with disabilities who are homeless. Yes, um, we evaluate children who are homeless, who are wards of the state. They're not in their parent custody. Yes, we can evaluate them. Children who are in private school. Homeschool is private school in the state of Texas. Homeschool is private school in the state of Texas, all right? So whether the child is homeless, whether their parents don't have custody of them, if they're at home school or some other private school down the street from your public school, it is a school district's responsibility to identify, locate, and evaluate them. Identify, locate, evaluate. The process of doing so is called child fine. Child fine. All right. So this is this is the law. This is entry level diagnostician. And when you come into the profession, this is what your responsibility is. Maintaining compliance with all things child fine law. OK, um, have you guys read the procedural safeguard booklet? Are you familiar with it? You can stick a yes or no in the chat. Somewhat good, Karen. <laughs> Five. Okay. Good. Yeah, good. Okay, good. Good. I love it. You definitely want to be, you want definitely want to um, be familiar with it. Yes, Rick cannot quote it. Well, good, April. And that's good. That's a good place to start. You definitely want to get to where you can quote it, April, because you'll need to be able to do that more so in practice. But you do, of course, want to be as familiar as possible whenever you're preparing to take the exam. So really, really, really good. OK, um, so I'm going to share my screen. Am I going to share my screen? Yes. I am going to take you back to the legal framework. And I want to take you to eligibility criteria, evaluation framework, um, and eligibility criteria. According to competency number one, you are a competent entry level diagnostician when you have a thorough understanding of learning disabilities and disability criteria, okay? And that's what you're going to find here. All the criteria for each of the disability conditions recognized under IDEA that a student can qualify for special education for are here. 
All of the criteria can be found here. Okay, the two that the educational diagnostician um, certifiably can identify are intellectual disability, specific learning disability, and then non categorical early childhood for ID or SLD. Okay, when you are studying the disability conditions and the criteria for each of them, um, you're going to want to pay attention to what the criteria is, okay? Oh, and when you're studying them, I'm going to give you a suggestion for how to study the disability criteria and kind of get them down. Start with the areas of eligibility that a diagnostician can identify. For example, we do not sign saying that a student is autistic, that they qualify with autism. We may contribute cognitive assessment or achievement information to the evaluation, but we're not the ones saying that this eligibility criteria has been met by law that can only be a school psychologist. What we can sign confirming that criteria has been met is an intellectual disability, non-categorical, that's this right here, non-categorical early childhood, and then a speech learning disability. Start with these first. Start with these first in your study. So I'm going to click on intellectual disability to give you an idea of how to read it and how to study it. Um, read all of it. You're going to have to know this. You have to know this, um, not only in preparation for exam prep, but when you're sitting in the seat um, as a diagnostician, you're going to need to know the information. Um, so over here, it says document. They put over here, a cheat sheet for you and it's telling you if it says document these are items that are required by law whenever you're looking at the potential of an intellectual disability required documents some of them are just citations of what the law says and some of these are practices which must be reflected things that you must do skills that you must have knowledge and skills you will find that here, okay? Really, really important. Um, you will find that there. So it gives you the evaluation procedures, but I want to draw your attention to the eligibility criteria because competency one said that you would have the knowledge of disability criteria, okay? That is this here. The criteria of a student to be intellectual disability means they have sub-average functioning. Okay. Um, that's reflected by a cognitive score. Required documentation of a cognitive score. If you're going to identify a student with an intellectual disability, a cognitive assessment is required. That's what the law is saying. All right. It also says there has to be deficits in at least two of the following areas, and it outlines for you here the adaptive behavior areas. These are the criteria to meet. Uh, these are the criteria for an intellectual disability. Okay, um, and these are the ways that you study the criteria. Okay, um, so you're going to do that for SLD, non-categorical ID first, then go to your behavior, eligibility conditions, emotional disturbance, autism other health impairment. When you hear other health impairment, it means a ton of different things. When you click on other health impairment, it will tell you all the different things. Look at that. These are all the different health problems that can occur. Um, other health impairment, what that means is you as a diagnostician, it's very possible that you would be doing the evaluation on epilepsy. The school psychologist is not going to necessarily be involved in that. Um, what else? Anything really. Um, asthma. Other than ADHD. This is, I, I don't know. I'm going to get in trouble maybe if I say this, but I, I, in my experience, it seems that ADHD is the most common other health impairment eligibility. Um, and you would bring in a school psychologist on this, 
Okay. In my district, we do anyway. Um, so attention deficit disorder. So um, this is something that you're going to want to be familiar with, even in your studies. What I found when people are studying, I'm sorry, when people have taken, taken um, the exam, the test describes the questions on your exam prep. They describe the characteristics of a disability condition without telling you what it actually is. So it may mention words like impulsivity or attention or things like low IQ and you need to have bells going off depending on which eligibility condition they're alluding to, even though they don't name a disability condition for you. That's why they want you studying the criteria um, for the eligibility, I mean, for the criteria the criteria for the disability condition because it may not be apparent when you're reading the question they may allude to it so you need to be well versed in the criteria so you want to start with the areas of disability that the diagnostician identifies then go to your behavior and i just say that because these are the most common that i've seen in the test questions when i say i've seen it i mean in the pearson practice exam and just working with other students on their practice test um, for their respective diagnostician programs um LCLD, the behavior, and then you can look at the other ones um, in no particular order. Just make sure that you have some familiarity with the vision, with the deaf blind, with the blind, all of that. You do need to have familiarity with them, but in terms of priority and structure for your study, SLD, ID, non-CAT first, your behavior, ED, OHI, AU, and then get to your other areas, okay? Um, so that's what you want to look at here for competency one, and that will wet your whistle for understanding competency one. OK, so I'm going to stop for a moment and I'm going to take some questions. Let's see what we have. Christina Padilla, what were the behavioral ones again? Yeah. So you definitely want to look at emotional disturbance. You want to look at autism and other health impairment, in particular, the ADHD criteria. Great question. Are there any other questions about what we've discussed? Okay, good. All right, so I'm going to take you to your study guide. This is a study guide that you found that I sent for you. Today is day one. We're on day one. Okay. On day one, domain one is broken into seven days of study. Okay. In this column, it tells you which day you're studying. In this column, it tells you which competency you're studying. So for tonight, for today, we did an overview, a general overview of competency one, and it focused and zoned in on descriptive statements A through C. Your activity to study competency one, A through C, is to create flashcards with all 13 disability categories and the criteria for each. Why? Because competency one said that you would have thorough knowledge of it. And this is one way to study for that. OK, this should take you about an hour and a half. You should be preparing to study about an hour and a half to two hours. Usually, if something's a little tougher for you or a little bit more dense, you may be studying it a little longer. If there's something that you've mastered and you already know it, you should not be spending as much time on it as you would be spending on something that you do not know. So roughly you wanna spend about an hour and a half studying each night. So when we get together tomorrow, same place, same time, 7.30, we're gonna do day two. And we're gonna talk about competency one, but we're gonna focus on D through F. The activity, we're gonna be talking about how to shift through assessment data. Man, working with RTI, how do you know based on our data if I test somebody or not test somebody? What am I looking for? What does the law say about it? 
other time frames associated with it, all of that good stuff. Now, I want to say to you that these exam prep nights that we're going to be spending together, we're going to do every day, like we said, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we're going to work through um, the study guide. These are bite size portions of content. OK, um, that you that are excellent for supplementing your coursework and supplementing your study. They're bite sized and they're um, to supplement what some of your knowledge and what some of your learning has been. If you know that you need something deeper, you need more explanation. Um, you're at a level where you're aware of it, but you don't know it the way that the competencies want you to know it. I do offer an exam prep course. The exam prep course is a pre-recorded four video series that takes you through every domain, competency, and every descriptive statement. It is pre-recorded. So if you purchase it, um, if you purchase it, it comes with pre-recorded sessions and it comes with a workbook. And I'll also give you free access into a private Fortin Institute Diac support group that I have where we do ongoing discussion, ongoing trainings. We do case studies together. We kind of chat it up a little bit. You get some more freebies, things like that. Let me show you if you're interested in reading about that. You would go to the website, the Borton Institute website. Screen share was canceled. Make sure you click share. Oh, you know what? I think I put the wrong thing. Here it is. This is the Borden Institute website. So when you go on, it's www.thebortoninstitute.com. This is what it looks like when you're first there. Um, and you would go to products and services and you scroll down. And here's where we are for educational diagnostician students. This is the educational diagnostician certification test it's a course. It's a series of four sessions. Um, it's about $37.50 or $40 per recording. You can't buy them individually. It only comes as a set and it goes through every single domain and every single um, competency. So that, that that is there for you to purchase if you know that you need a thorough and deep understanding of the content um, and that supplemented with the study guides and this exam prep, you can't help but knock the ball out of the park. As a matter of fact, I'm so confident um, in your ability when you walk in after doing the challenge, after doing the exam prep course, if you purchase in the next 48 hours, I'm going to give you how to interview for an educational diagnostician position. That is a seminar that I do usually over the summer. It's about $75 value. I'm going to give it to you free whenever you purchase the exam prep course. So essentially, it's kind of like you're getting an exam prep course for 50% off. I'm going to gift you the how to prep for an interview position for a diet because once you knock out the 253 exam, you still got to get the job. <laughs> So we're going to talk about what you need to go in and rock an interview um, and get it and knock it out and be awarded that diagnostician position. All right. Um, so I'm going to give that to you if you buy within the next 48 hours. Is that what I said? 48 hours. If you're watching this by replay right now, it is after eight. So I will give you until eight o'clock on Wednesday. If you purchase the exam prep course by eight o'clock on Wednesday, I'll give you how to um, interview for an exam prep course. Thank you guys for being on. I really, really appreciate it. We are over a little bit. I wanted to get you out in 30 minutes, but we might do 45 might be more ideal just with taking some of the questions. Before we leave, are there any burning questions that you want to ask? I'll give you a second to put in the chat. I know there's a little bit of a delay. Are there any questions? Mm 
You're welcome, Shalice. I'm happy to do it. Any questions now? All right. Awesome. I want to remind you to go over to the Borden Institute. That is right there. There'll be a free study video there for you. Um, all of the uh, information that we discussed today, you have in your email, you have in your notebook. I'm not your notebook. You have in your study guide. Thank you. Oh, yeah, it's my, it's my, it's my pleasure, David. It's my pleasure. Yes, yeah, Shara. It's my pleasure, Shara. Um, and I will see you guys tomorrow, 730, completely free. Feel free to invite your friends. It's welcome to everybody. I'll make sure they get the study material. Okay. Thank y'all. How long are each of the video sessions? Christine, Christine, each of the video sessions are about an hour and a half to two hours. So it's quite a bit of information um, whenever you take it. It has a workbook and it's very thorough, very easy for you to follow. So it's about, it's a real good question. It's about an hour and a half, two hours each for the exam prep questions. She's talking about the pre-recorded exam prep course. Great, great question. Okay. Awesome. All right. I'll hang out. If there's any more questions, you're welcome to stay on. If not, I will see you tomorrow, 730. I will email you first thing in the morning. Uh, Rosie, the activity for day two, is there anything we need to prep before the meeting? I don't think so, Rosie, but I tell you what, let me look at it now. And if there is, I will email you. If there's something um, that you need, I'll email you and let you know. Great question. All right. Have a good evening. Go study. You're not going to bed. Grab a bite to eat and go study. Go study. Go study. All right. Bye, friends. Have a great evening.